In this video, we will understand what is MVC architecture and why it was needed. Back in the early days of web development, websites were often built using a pattern called spaghetti code pattern. It's like cooking without a recipe. In this, everything is mixed up. In this approach, the code responsible for handling user input, processing data, and presenting the output to user was all mixed up either in a single file or it is scattered across multiple files. This made the code hard to understand, difficult to maintain and even more prone to bugs. As the application size grows, these problems were also growing exponentially. So the experts in the industry thought a lot about this. This was really frustrating for everyone. Then they came up with the new architecture, which was MVC architecture. MVC stands for Model View Controller. It is a design pattern that organizes the code of a web application into three distinct layers. Before we see what are these components, let us see why there was a need for this architecture. The need for MVC arose from the limitations and drawbacks of spaghetti code approach. As web applications become more complex, it became very difficult to manage and maintain them. Developers needed a better way to organize their code, improve reusability and make it easier to collaborate with the other people on large projects. So due to this, MVC architecture was introduced. In this, we have clear separation of web application components based on their working. Now let us discuss all three components briefly. The first component is model. Model is where the data of the application resides. It represents the information that will be helping view to render the data. That is whatever data user is able to see on the view that resides in a model. For example, in a social media application, post, comments and messages, etc. are different models which contain data related to those components. Second component is view. The view is responsible for presenting the data to user in a human readable format. It's like a user interface to the application. In our social media application example, the view would be HTML template that displays post, comment and other content to the user. The third and the last component of MVC is controller. The controller acts as a middle layer between model and view. It handles user input, process requests and update the model accordingly. In our social media application example, the controller would receive requests from the user like adding a comment or creating a new post. After that, it fetches or modify the data from model and then pass the data to appropriate view for display. By using MVC, we can keep our code organized, maintainable and easier to understand even as our application grows in complexity. This makes it easier to add new features, fix bugs and collaborate with other developers. Let us see Spring MVC and its components. Spring also follow the MVC architecture where components are controller, model and view resolver. This session will be basic introduction to Spring MVC. In the next sessions, we will first cover the complete flow of request from user till that user get a response from MVC. We will also have one complete project where we will implement a register and login functionalities in Spring MVC and also few other important things. Now let us dive into details of Spring MVC with example code snippets. The first component is controller. As we know in Spring MVC, a controller is responsible for handling incoming HTTP requests, processing them and generating an appropriate response. Controllers are annotated with at the rate controller annotation and different methods handle specific URL paths. Now let us understand this with an example. So this is my controller class, which is annotated with at the rate controller annotations. That means this class will be providing URL path mapping. In this, the first method is annotated with at the rate get mapping and URL path as slash hello. That means this method will be invoked when there is a get HTTP request for the path slash hello. 
Now in this the return type is string but it will actually be name of the view that we want to return. In this case we are returning hello that means view resolver will look for hello.html or hello.jsp depending on the view resolver configuration that we will see next. This method represents the simplest request handling without any model in between. The next method is annotated with at the rate post mapping annotation with URL path slash submit. This method will be invoked when a post HTTP request is triggered with slash submit URL path. This method expects a request parameter name of type string which can be used for processing. In the end it is returning result as a view name. So to summarize. My controller has two methods annotated with at the rate get mapping and at the rate post mapping which handles get and post requests. These methods return name of the views that will be rendered after processing the request. Now let us understand the concept of model in controller. The model in Spring MVC represents the data that controller passes to the view for rendering. It's essentially a container for the data that needs to be displayed to the user. In this example, we have a method show hello page. It will be invoked for a get HTTP call with slash hello URL path. In this, we have one object of model. We can add attributes to this model using different methods available. Like in this example, we have used model dot add attribute function. In this method call, we need to provide a combination of key and value. Key will be used in the view page which can be HTML or JSP to access the value stored during the controller processing. And again in the end, returning the name of the view. To summarize again, show hello page method adds an attribute name message to the model. This attribute will be accessible in the view name hello and can be used to display the message to the user. The last component of Spring MVC architecture is View Resolver. The View Resolver in Spring MVC is responsible for mapping logical view names returned by the controller to the actual view implementation. It will identify the actual view template or page which can be an HTML or JSP based on the view name returned by controller. So if you remember in the previous example, we have seen that we are just returning a string from controller method like hello or result. After that, it's the responsibility of view resolver to identify the appropriate HTML or JSP mapped with that returned view name. This mapping can be done using two ways. One is using XML and other one is using Java code configuration. Let us see both of these. Let us first see how it can be done using XML. As Spring MVC is a type of Spring application only, we can define the beans in application context.xml. In this example, we have a bean with ID view resolver, which is linked to the class internal resource view resolver from Spring. We have to define two properties in this. First is location of the view files. Second one is extension of those view files. So for that we have prefix property to define path and suffix property to define extension of the view files. Once this is done, the view resolver will use this configuration to identify which view to return to the user with model data if applicable. For example, if the view name is hello, which is returned from controller, then view resolver will look for view files with the name hello.jsp in slash web inf slash views directory. If any model data needed to be filled up in the view, that will also be done. Now to summarize this, in this example, the internal resource view resolver is used to resolve view names to JSP files located in slash web inf slash views directory. The similar configuration can be done using Java code as well. Here we have this configuration class which is annotated with at the rate configuration. That means this will act as a class which can provide beans to the Spring IOC container. In addition to that we have at the rate component scan where we have defined the package to look for the managed beans. Here we have also used at the rate enable web MVC annotation that will help in enabling all the MVC related features. 
So I will have a separate dedicated video on at the rate enable WebMBC annotation as well, where we will see what all things this particular annotation handles. Now similar to XML, we have this method view resolver, which will return a bean of type view resolver by setting prefix and suffix details. This is exactly same as XML we have seen earlier. With this Java based configuration, you no longer need XML configuration for view resolver as Spring will automatically detect and use this configuration while initializing the application context. Now in the end, let us see one sample view component, which will be actually returned to the user with updated model data. Here we have a simple JSP file with title and body. In this, we have this h1 tag to present header level texts. This dollar message is a placeholder for the value of message attribute added in the model by controller. When rendered, it will display the message welcome to lazy programmer as specified in the controller. So I hope all these three components and the basic MVC architecture is clear to you. These are the core components of Spring MVC that work together to handle requests process data and render views in a web application. In our next video, we will see the complete flow of request, how it is handled at different levels in Spring MVC. We will see and understand few new components also, which are internal to Spring MVC. If you find this video useful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.